Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I share tips and insights on personal finance and investing. Today I want to talk about a book that I recently read and found very insightful. It's called The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel, and it's a book that explores the strange ways people think about money and how to make better sense of one of life's most important topics. Money is something that affects everyone, but it's also something that we don't often talk about openly and honestly. We tend to have a lot of assumptions, biases, and emotions that influence our financial decisions, and sometimes they can lead us astray. That's why I think this book is so valuable, because it challenges some of the common myths and misconceptions that we have about money, and it offers some timeless lessons on wealth, greed, and happiness. The book is divided into 19 short chapters, each one telling a story or giving an example of how our psychology can affect our money mindset. I won't go over all of them, but I'll share some of the key takeaways that I learned from this book. The first takeaway is that theory isn't reality. What I mean by that is that we often learn about money from books, articles or courses that teach us the math and the logic behind financial concepts. But in the real world, money is not just a numbers game. It's also a game of emotions, expectations, and uncertainty. And these factors can make a huge difference in how we behave and how we achieve our financial goals. For example, we may know that the stock market has historically gone up over time and that the best strategy is to buy and hold for the long term. But when we actually experience a market crash, we may panic and sell at the bottom losing a lot of money and missing out on the recovery. Or we may know that saving and investing is important, but we may struggle to stick to a budget or a plan because we are tempted by the immediate gratification of spending. The book shows us that we need to be aware of the gap between theory and reality, and that we need to adapt our financial strategies to our own personality, goals and circumstances. There is no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to money, and we need to find what works for us. The second takeaway is that luck and risk are everywhere. This means that we need to be humble and cautious when it comes to judging our own and others' financial success or failure. We often tend to attribute our success to our own skill and effort and our failure to bad luck or external factors. But the truth is that there is a lot of randomness and unpredictability in the world, and sometimes we can make good decisions that lead to bad outcomes, or bad decisions that lead to good outcomes. For example, we may invest in a company that we think has a great product and a bright future, but then something unexpected happens, like a scandal, a lawsuit, or a competitor, and the company goes bankrupt. Or we may invest in a company that we know nothing about just because we heard a tip from a friend, and the company turns out to be a huge success. These are examples of how luck and risk can affect our financial outcomes, and they are not always in our control. The book teaches us that we need to be realistic and honest about the role of luck and risk in our financial journey, and that we need to avoid overconfidence and arrogance. We also need to be compassionate and understanding when it comes to others' financial situations, and not judge them based on their outcomes alone. We need to look at the bigger picture, and not just the individual events. The third takeaway is that enough is never enough. This means that we need to be careful about the trap of always wanting more money and never being satisfied with what we have. We often think that if we have more money we will be happier, but that's not always the case. Money can buy us some happiness, but only up to a point. Beyond that, money can also bring us more stress more problems, and more expectations. For example, we may think that if we have a million dollars, we will be set for life. But then we may start comparing ourselves to others who have more, and we may feel inadequate or envious. Or we may start spending more on things that we don't really need, and we may end up in debt or living beyond our means. Or we may start taking bigger risks with our money, hoping to make even more, and we may end up losing everything. The book reminds us that we need to define what enough means for us and that we need to be grateful and content with what we have. 
we also need to be careful about the trade-offs that we make with our money and the opportunity costs that we incur. We need to ask ourselves what we are giving up in order to get more money and whether it's worth it. We need to remember that money is a means to an end, not an end in itself. These are just some of the main takeaways that I got from reading The Psychology of Money. I highly recommend this book to anyone who wants to improve their relationship with money and to make smarter financial decisions. You can find the book on Amazon, Goodreads, Tanton, or your local bookstore. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And let me know in the comments what you think about the book or if you have any questions or suggestions for future topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.